Our TV can always be trusted. I would never trust American TV, all those channels and different programs. At the heart of our beloved Krakosia, where the icy waves meet the rugged shore, lies Chernyelyoka, a beacon of Soviet supremacy. Under the visionary leadership of Comrade Vasiliev, Krakosian minds propel us beyond the frontiers of possibility. We harness the resources of our land for the prosperity of all. We celebrate the heroic deeds of our workers and farmers whose toil and sweat pave a way to a brighter tomorrow. Workers unite. Long live Comrade Vasiliev. Glory to the Republic of Krakosia. Ahoy! And welcome to the channel. I am Commander Tyrael, and I have been missing in action for two weeks because I've been working for the Reds, helping them plan what will be the most amazing Soviet Republic to ever to exist. This is Workers and Resources, Soviet Republic, and like I said, I have been completely lost, and it is possibly the best city builder transport management logistics coordinator you name it you can probably do it in this game if you like what you see make sure to hit the subscribe button because this will be the first in a bunch of videos showing the construction of our epic soviet republic but rather than me go on and on about it i thought i would show you just what i've been up to this is the glorious anthem of krakosia Welcome to the channel, I'm Commander Tyrael, and we are having our first look at Workers and Resources, Soviet Republic. Uh, this game has been in early access since 2019, and it, admittedly, I overlooked the game because I picked up Transport Fever 2 instead. I was a huge lover of the Transport Fever se series, and at the time I decided that I would pick up a full release rather than early access. I kind of overlooked it because... It just seemed like another city builder to me. But I've heard amazing things about it. And apparently the transport side of things is a huge focus. And I love trains. I love boats. So let's see what we can do. I'm kind of ignoring Mr. Mikhail. Standard tutorial. Alright, our first task. Build 750 meters worth of road. Where shall we set up? our new Soviet Republic. We have a border station here. Apatomu. I like building coastal cities. No stranger to city builders. I've been playing the Sim City series since it came out. Played City Skylines. It wasn't 
really my thing. That was more of a map painter, I felt. Transport fever, I loved. Because you got to use trains, boats, planes, and automobiles. Alright. Looks like we have a contender for our starting area. This little stretch of land looks like a dog leaping out into the sea. And we've got a nice bay there. We could set up an excellent port facility. Well, let's get started. We've got a bunch of roads here. Asphalt road with street lights. But it wants me to build the standard asphalt road. We've got mud and gravel roads. We've got a trolley bus road, panel road, and what looks to be tram tracks. Let's get started. We are, if we choose to build here, we're a long way from the border, so we have to think about how we can connect to our neighbors. We have a, a mountain range to contend with, not a very large one. But I do think this is where we're going to set up. And the first order of business will be to set up a highway that will allow a flow of goods in and out of the city without congesting us up. I've just spent some time having a look right around the map before we got started. There aren't any obvious resource nodes or anything. This is the tutorial, considered to be easy mode. I've heard there is a realistic mode where it's like hardcore. You have to build everything yourself, which I'm keen to explore that. But for now, we'll just take it one step at a time. One meter of road at a time. <laughs> we Placing this stretch of road here already passes our objective. So we aren't going to unpause. I'm going to spend a decent amount of time setting up some transport infrastructure before we even think about building a town. Trying to leave a nice gap on either side of the road so we can build towards the coast any industrial facilities that we need, as well as a rail line. Being this far from the border, I think we're going to be highly reliant on rail and sea import and export. But that's all right. We don't need our neighbors. I haven't yet decided a name for my glorious republic, but we will get there. We have 10 million rubles to spend and 2 million US dollars. I do like that, so that means we can trade with NATO nations and the USSR. Alright, the first stretch of our highways set up. We've invested in two lanes of highway, but I am undecided. I think I'm going to spend a lot of money to save time in transport. Early investment in a tunnel through this mountain and then across that little peninsula. Let's have a look how the tunnel builder works. We just stretch it out. The construction of road seems to be very similar to transport fever in that it's node based. So you, there is a lot of free form that you can do. It's going to cost us half a million rubles to burrow through this mountain. But it will be worth it. It'll cut out a significant time off our journey to the border. And then we have the highway stretching towards inland of our republic. We are right on the map edge. On the northeast corner of the map. I think the wisest thing to do is to not unpause the game. I did it for a millisecond and it started spending money. And I have to kind of keep a running total of how much I'm spending in my head. I think we're nearly at... With the tunnel, it's going to be over a million rubles. And we're going to have to do a uh, highway interchange here. I also have to remember that in this Republic, they will drive on the opposite side of the road to me. So that will be the outgoing lane towards the tunnel. At the moment, we might keep it a single tunnel. We've got concrete bridges, a whole variety of bridges to use. But let's stay with Vanilla Bridge. 
will set up an on-ramp. An off-ramp, sorry, rather. Make it curvy. The soundtrack certainly gets you into the mood. Some post commentary here. I spent about 20 minutes thinking about the best route towards the border and I decided to bite the bullet and just the tunnel will be our major link. And we'll leave the, uh, the two lane highway unfinished at the moment. I tend to get carried away with roads and rail lines. And so I figured if I, as long as I link up to the border, I would then be able to start building my city. The planned construction doesn't come out of the bank until you unpause, but leveling the terrain does. I have to keep that in mind. All right, so the highway interchange will come down this lane and across onto this lane. So this will be the outgoing lane. We need to draw another. This is coming from the tunnel to merge onto the highway. We deleted the bridge, it was in the way. Really mental gymnastics for me to work out lanes coming from the southern hemisphere. I've deleted this bridge and interchanged four times now, but I think this will be the way to go. Coming over the highway to head towards the city. And this one's coming off the highway to hopefully merge towards the tunnel. So it's not pretty, but it will be functional. <laughs> and what if it's ugly, we can just dress it up with trees. Best way to hide poor planning. There we go, we'll just keep it like that for now. Yeah, it's not beautiful, but it doesn't have to be. Now it's time to grid up a little bit. We'll bring a main drive off the highway. Trying to use the terrain contours to make it a visually appealing city. I like that lake there. I will do something with that lake. Maybe that could be the seat of our government. Stay on this elevation to keep the road nice and gentle. Give us some natural curves to the city. Now, I haven't decided which side will be the residential side. I do know that the Soviets tended to build in things called micro districts where self contained districts would have all the services and essential things required within walking distance so that no one really needed cars or the use of public transport to get to work and to get to the, well, I guess you would call it the service center rather than the central business district. So I think we will we'll go along those lines, certainly. Is the beach a thing? Can we get a beach in? One thing that appeals to me is I get to build the city. One thing that I didn't particularly like about Transport Fever was the urban sprawl and the fact you have no real control over what the city becomes or looks like. Two star rated beach on the frigid coast. <laughs> what about over here? What would the beach be rated over here? Does that affect things? It's more trees. Now this is my first time playing, so I am literally just experimenting, but I promise you, I'll get my butt into gear very shortly. It's gonna be a four star rated beach here. So the terrain does affect certain buildings. We'll keep that in mind as we construct our city. What next? Let's finish up this road. Hug the coastline. I think this shore that faces the ocean will be the, the service side. 
And then the side that faces the bay will be our industrial sector. And then we will have the highway splitting them in two. And we could have all public transport sort of circulating this road here that we're building to bring all of our people to the main highway to either be put onto rail to leave the city or to work in the industry that we might place on that side. That, that makes, makes a good plan. I do think we're going to make a pretty beautiful looking city. This terrain will suit a, a city. We will become a trading powerhouse. Let's extend our highway right down to the coastline. up our coastal road, stretch this down a little bit further. And you can't connect to the end of the node without winding the road around. So like in Transport Fever, putting a little bit of extra road lets you do funny things with shapes. And we can just trim off that extra piece of road if we don't need it on the end of the highway. We'll do a similar winding road around here. But I will try and keep some space between the road and the coastline itself. We've got an absolute abundance of building options. All sorts of rail for cargo. Look at all the train stations. Holy moly. <clears throat> We've got signals. That's good. You wait till you see the horror show signaling I can do. <laughs> Brute forcing with signals. All right, our highway is looking in good shape. I think it's almost time to let it build. Or should we cross up the city a bit more? I know this is supposed to be a tutorial and I'm following it, but I am a very open-ended gamer. I don't need my handheld. I'll work it out pretty quick. Alright, yeah, so we're definitely building a rail line on the left side of the highway, as you see it on screen. That will be our exit out of town. So we'll keep the road infrastructure on the left side to a minimum until we can figure out what we're going to do with rail. Oh, why well, we'll need to look at all those stations to figure out what the heck is going on. For now, let's grid up our town. Our city. As I was saying before, if you know Transport Fever, you can do very funky things. You can get geometric shapes by drawing lots of lines. It just takes a bit of practice. Where's the node at? Now, I want to do about 180 degrees from here and then delete out the center, and I should be able to get a nice egg shape. Oh, it's a little bit uneven. We'll just go for 180 here and then draw a link between them. This, what I'm building here, is the government center, I think. Our seat of power for our yet unnamed leader. Looking through the decorations, I noticed there were road gates and footpath gates. So let's make this a walled off section. It is going to be our future government house. I don't know if there are any such thing. I haven't looked through those building options, but at least we will try. So we'll get a park gate with vases. The city is gridded up and there is so many building options. Wow, it's... Oh, it's a model builder's delight. We could put a metro station, an underground metro station in. That would be probably a smart idea, just to place it down and think about building the rail later. All right, we have our basic city layout. It is time to build some houses. 
airplanes. Yay. Flats. 87% quality. Let's go with those. That's pretty high quality. 87. 110 people in a building. Let's build <clears throat> what I guess you would call quadrangles. So all of the buildings will face inward away from the main road. And we'll see how many of these flats we can stack in here. I've seen a, a few photos of Soviet town planning and it it is very unique. We will just say that. But it also, some of the cities I've seen are very, very intelligently placed out, they seem as well. But let's go. Put down a flat here. I think we can fit a fair few in this little block and then still have a road in. We've got auto connections. Let's go there. It's like playing with a brand new Lego set, a complete Lego set, and you're just like overwhelmed with the amount of pieces. I placed the houses the wrong way initially, but we fixed that up now. Get some long flats in here, and this will sort of be the funnel into our micro district. And hopefully I'll have enough room to fit some services in here too. But I was thinking because we're not building a town and we're going for more of a capital city, we should have a service district and perhaps I will put the shopping and hospitals and fire down the main road parallel to the highway. I'll try and sneak a road down this little section here into our micro district. Not too far in. I want to try and isolate them from the highway as well so there won't be any pedestrian access to that highway. I saw there's a heap of different fences I could use. So we'll do that. And so it will be noisy living next to our highway. But you'll be safe from it. When I'm placing these houses down, I can see there is a walking distance. So that's going to be very similar to Transport Fever. That if they're not within the walking distance of a service, they cannot use it unless you provide them transport to said service. And then sort of you're putting pressure onto a transport system so the more we can spread out our services to cater for more people the less transport we will have to provide them just for their basic needs and then you'll only really need to provide transport for them to get to work unless you build them right next to their workplace as well there are a lot of tabs in the tutorial that are blacked out so water uh, waste power and a couple others are not accessible so at the moment I don't have to worry about powering my houses which is great because I am obsessive with power lines and I'm not a fan of water systems so that's good they find their own uh, power and water <laughs> Right, so the theory with a micro district is to have the basics right in the center so that everybody can access them without ever having to really leave the district except for work or something urgent like a hospital visit. So the, I will try and get some shops. There are heaps of shopping centers to look at. And I saw that the workshop is just full of buildings and there is, I believe, a building editor so you can make your own. But for this playthrough, we will just use vanilla. I'm sure that there will be some veterans of the game that will see the video. So bear with me. I'm a quick learner. There's space for a flat in the middle. But I don't know if that's a wise idea. It's all trial and error. We'll stick with the same blocks of flats with the exception of those central ones that will house more people. My theory with that is have the high density housing closer to the road. They will be the service workers. <laughs> How many flats can we fit along here? We don't want any access to that road, to the highway. The road is fine. 
There are also pedestrian bridges and underpasses. So I could fence up this micro district but still get them across the highway to our, what I assume to be the future rail line. Pretty much walled up the rest of the city. <laughs> Little bit in the way there. Let's just try to mirror the other side. Just doing it all by eye. It won't totally be even, but that doesn't matter. This is our first Republic. The streets don't have to be straight. Delete, build, delete, build, not be happy, delete, build. <laughs> that will be the loop. I will edit out all the boring bits, I promise. Uh, or at least I hope they're not. Meh. We're getting there. These thin flats are going to have to be the ones. I tried as I might, I couldn't fit enough of the medium flats in there to please my eye. I've got little ones. But they would be better for a village. A satellite village, you know, just a man a mine site or something like that. Turn this around. I know there's a hotkey, but I am an epic scroll wheel user. Not straight, but I don't mind. We could put in a big plaque to commemorate our overlords. Or we could have a giant statue of Lenin peering down the main road. Or we could stay on track. <laughs> See, could I fit some pedestrian crossings behind these flats? That would be good. The node-based construction doesn't let you build from a T-intersection. That's unfortunate. You just have footpaths winding everywhere. Sidewalks for the Americans. But we are not in America. <laughs> Too close to join that one up. We'll do a loop-de-loop -loop there. Well, it's a mud path. Don't want a mud path. The different paths have different walking speeds for pedestrians, so perhaps that translates into distance so they can walk. In my experience in transport fever, you know, a, a villager or a city person would only spend a certain amount of time doing any action before they would give up. So if they only, let's say for instance, they only get are allowed to spend two hours a day walking, they will waste that on a footpath that's poor quality. That's my logic anyway. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, please. But I remember upgrading the quality of roads in Transport Fever was a good way to extend the range of your lines and the reach of the city folk. Right, that looks okay, and it fits. Let's do it again. Perhaps we'll have a sports field, and a, uh, a small clinic, or a shop. A market stall. I'm not going to get the same effect from that one. The bulldozer will become my best friend and worst enemy, I think. It seems to delete more than what you click on. Trying to do a sneaky sneaky and sneak a T intersection across. And that's it. And then delete the ends off those paths and that should work. Connect them up. It's a little fancy tool that lets you connect nodes together. Getting the hang of it. 
what, two hours into our playthrough already. And yet to see a soul on the streets of our town. When I would play Transport Phoebe, you would spend a good hour or two just setting up your initial transport lines if you started in a later year. Before you ever unpause, you'd spend your starting budget and then hope you could make money <laughs> or just take exorbitant loans with little intention of paying them back. Okay, I think we've connected all of the buildings to the roads in some way or another. What sort of services can we provide? An indoor pool. Pretty fancy. We're already surrounded by water. That doesn't seem to change this one's attractiveness by moving it around. Is there tourism, I wonder? Oh wait, there is a tab there for tourism. Yes, so there is tourism. What kind of tourism? I'm not too sure. Will we be allowed to let Westerners in? That's interesting thought. All right. We've got the pedestrian underpasses being planned out. I can't fit overpasses, the footbridges. So we will have a much tidier appearance by going underground, but I think it's going to cost us much more. We've already spent 50,000 rubles in just terrain adjustment. So I have to keep an eye on the budget. I'm scared that as soon as I press unpause, we're just gonna go bankrupt. Well, this is for science, comrades. All right. Yeah, so the plan is to get the pedestrians from this district across the highway by going underground to possibly meet up with industry or transport out of the city. I can't see, like, I think I've said it before, I can't see any resources on the map. So I don't know what our first industry will be. But I just hope I don't go bankrupt from maintenance fees or something like that. I remember in Transport Fever, if you put too many signals down, you could go bankrupt from having lights. <laughs> Signal maintenance fees. It's the only limit to my power. I am curious, like, because most city builders, you make money either selling goods in Transport Fever, for example, or city skylines through taxes and fees. Uh, don't think we charge taxes in this Republic. Try as I might, I couldn't get the pedestrian underpasses to work behind the flats. So we're going to move them to in front of the flats. That way, I guess the other buildings have more access to them. It's been funny. It wants to link up to the path next to it by crossing the road and turning around. There we go. Maybe one more in the center. That way we can service every house. Go into the tunnels. <laughs> Have to keep some security guards in there, I think. Or lots of posters telling people not to be naughty. Right. Wait. Underground view, that's it. I'll learn all the hotkeys eventually. Oh, what are you doing? It's right there, go under it. Grab the node, there we go. I mustn't have selected the node correctly. Link this one up. There we go, you can visit your Nonna's house by going through the tunnel. And then we'll stretch the tunnel out a little bit. We need to leave enough space for any stations, etc. Or do you have to place it and then connect it? You can't preemptively draw your tunnel.
Oh, there's so many buttons. There we go. Oh, shit, it's too short. <laughs> I'll be back. I unpaused the game for a millisecond and we purged 40,000 rubles instantly. Everyone started building, invisibly started building the roads, which is cool. Looking at the uh, the revenue, it's we're importing foreign labor to do our construction for us. We don't actually have any people yet. Reading through the monuments, we give loyalty to our citizens that are within range of a monument. So we'll get started on the loyalty point program. All of our citizens will have to stamp their loyalty card every day to prove their loyalty. Give them some sports fields, basketball and volleyball courts, 21 people at a time with three workers. That's pretty reasonable. We have a lot of people in this district. 110 for all the small buildings. And 180 for the large ones, I think. So we might need a few tennis courts. Yeah, and we'll have the glorious monuments of the Soviet Union looking over our people as they do sport. We'll put a football field, a soccer field. That's not football. This is football. Basketball and volleyball courts mixed together. That's a big one. Put that one there. That will service more people. Call me crazy, but I'm not interested in giving my people too much alcohol. That might be contentious words to say in my republic. So we will put a pub in. But where shall the pub be? It will not be a big one. Not having you lounge about. We're not making money off the sale of alcohol. <laughs> so, well, unless we do. If we do make money off the sale of alcohol to my people, then certainly have as much as you want. But I don't think that's how it works. The pub is complete. The next up we need shopping center. So I've got this really massive one for 70,000 rubles. It can service 450 people which I believe is big enough to service everyone in this district. Because you're not gonna take your whole family there to shop, are you? That's crazy talk. I would say that a third of people would be off work at a time if they were doing eight hour shifts. So we'd expect that maybe half would have the opportunity to shop when they're not working. Connecting up some more paths so that making sure that our people can reach the shop. We'll need a center path through that block there. A little bit tight. But I think it'll look good. Again, sticking with the theme of keeping our pedestrians away from the roads, let's put a tunnel to our district. It may be a bit too long for them to reach, especially from the western side of town, at the top of screen. They only have three connections as well, okay. So this one connect to, can connect to our shop, but you've got to get low. And the, obviously I'm going to build another housing district next door, so perhaps the tunnel should be ready to meet up with them. So I think down this little center line where the housing district is now will continue to be housing districts and where the shops are will be a service district that will run along the entirety of the center of the city. And then perhaps we could build more residential on the opposite side so that our service center can service everybody. We've got orphanages and three flavors of hospital. This one is huge. This will probably need our entire town just to staff it. But if we're going to build a capital, then we need to provide healthcare for everybody. Small clinics, 
hospital and then that monstrosity. Does the same follow for fire departments? That's a pretty big fire department. But there isn't much change in the amount of workers. So let's go with the mid-sized fire department. And we'll build it right next to the hospital as our sort of emergency services precinct. Can't build police stations, the crime is locked out. We'll put another road through the center here so that our service vehicles can provide stock for the shopping center as well as give an ambulance a way to get in and out. Got road signs, pretty abundant amount of road signs. Parking lots. Well, we would need a parking lot next to the hospital and a shopping center, if anywhere. That way, people that own cars can travel further to get to their required destination. The district that we just built will not have cars. I know I said they won't have cars and I have placed car parks down. I did that sort of to save space. So, if I need more things in here, I can just delete the car park and plop it down. But I would like to use up all the available space before we start. If I accidentally unpause the game again, my bank account is going to explode. <laughs> we just lost a hundred thousand dollars before. A hundred thousand rubles, rather. Right, the second block of flats. This one is a smaller block, so we will have to come up with something new. And I think we will just use all the medium flats this time. Again, with the same thought, all the buildings facing inwards. We've built a fence to barricade the highway and provide some noise suppression. I don't know if that's actually a thing, but I've done it anyway. I'm pretty sure it was... Uh, City skylines that had a big thing about traffic pollution. My waste management tab is blocked out for this campaign map. I have a feeling this is going to be like the longest tutorial map ever. I'm about way into my playtime and we're yet to see a human life. <laughs> But hopefully, as soon as we do press start, everything just springs to life. Just like a lot of other city builders, you get to see it all come to life in one magical moment. This will be a much tighter district. But the next blocks are about the same size, so I'll be able to emulate the shape. And then if I place a block down, I know how many people I'm going to get. I saw there's a clone tool in the terrain tools. I did a bit of a test and you can just snip an area. And my last housing district doesn't fit in here though. So we have to rebuild from you. There we go. I th we've got room for the car park. Uh, it looks like there's some kind of different connection to the shopping center as well. So I've left some space in case I can attach a warehouse or a truck stop or something. Might be able to sneak a connection in here. Yep. You just have to be cheeky with the road length. Long enough to create a node. There we go. And then you can trim it off if you need to. Get a nice little geometry going on. Got a little bit of extra space on the western side of the block, but that's okay. Try and emulate the shape. Where's that node? There we go. Yay. Do it. There we go. All right, that's a nice little square we've got going on. The most Soviet of quadrangles.
Oops, wrong way. But that's alright, I'll fix it later. I don't think you need a road connection, but I've been doing it anyway. As long as they have a connection. Because I saw that footpaths give vehicles a 35 km an hour top speed, so I'm not sure what that means. Can vehicles drive on footpaths? <laughs> Should I be concerned that my supply trucks will run through the center of my footpaths? Lucky I've got a big hospital. Now, sports services for this district won't be as complex. What have we got? Well, that one's a big one. That's not going to fit. We'll need the little one. That's a volleyball court. Should I just build another one? This, this district will love volleyball. City Stadium. Footy field? Yeah, that'll fit. Can I get to a footpath from it though? That's the question. Very tight space. We are going for urban environment. And I will provide abundant greenery for them to look at in other parts of the city. It's free transport for all. What kind of Soviet city would we be if we didn't have continuous reminders of how to, oh, awesome it is to be part of the working class? So let's put down a house of culture. Our glorious comrade Lenin shall be at the entrance to our uh, government zone. Reminding all visitors, he's watching them. Uh-oh, we have nine varieties of fountains. That means that I'm going to get creative with fountains. They're going to be placed everywhere. <laughs> Just pumping water from the bay to, fi to, uh, to power them. So let's not get the bay too dirty. Let's have a line of fountains leading up to Comrade Lennon. Big fountains, little fountains, all the fountains. It is an obelisk. It is impossible to project power without copious amounts of phallic symbols all over your city. They are the best way to show that you are hard people ready to endure. Make sure they stand tall everywhere. We have a literal palace of communism. <laughs> this is going to be the centerpiece of our government district. What better way to show that we are committed to the cause than have a palace to our ideology. We're going to spend a decent amount of rubles <laughs> to erect this monument. Just have to link up this road and I think we will have completed our 750 meters of road objective. Take that capitalism. <laughs> are you all ready to witness the fastest collapse of a national banking system. Here we go. Press pause and we just lost half a million. And we've passed the objective. Our city will need flats. Build residential buildings. Make sure you have enough for at least 500 people. Um, okay, I'll get on that straight away. Thanks, buddy. I hope I don't break the tutorial by overbuilding. But we are spending our rubles at an astron astronomical rate. We're down a million. All of our buildings are popping up during a rainstorm, no doubt. Our intersection, highway intersection, our road is just being paved magically, constructed in phases. All the flats, see, they come. A lot of barren dirt. Shopping. The basic needs of every citizen are food, meat, and alcohol, and clothes, and electronics. Small grocery stores only sell food and meat. Okay, build a shopping center. All right, we'll wait for this one to build. Oh, we're down 3 million rubles already. A million of it spent in foreign manpower. 800,000 spent in foreign invitations. Who are we inviting? Does it cost money to invite people? 3 million mark of rubles. 
It's not as bad as I thought, actually. City hospitals being shopping for everyone. We have a shopping center, great, but let's make sure all of our citizens have access to it. Some of the residences are too far away from shopping, then they will not un be able to access it. Yeah, as I thought, we're a little bit too far away. It's just a matter of linking up most of the roads and tunnels that I hadn't yet connected. But I also have to, I just built a small shopping center, or a small shop in the first district just to service their food needs until we get a bus line or something up just to satisfy this objective. So these buildings can all see now. I'm just waiting for the shop to be come active. Still can't fix this problem. This house here was causing problems. It wasn't able to get access for some reason. It was too close to the road. So let's try that. Alcohol. Let's think. What's needed for a good republic? A pub. We've got one of those. I've had a good think about it and I'm going to move the shopping center further down towards these districts because I will be able to place another one further up and that will service the other two or three districts that we built. So two shopping centers to service this side of the city. I think that will be the best for long-term growth. That way I don't have to make room for a bigger establishment because we've already thought about it. The pub was also too close to the road and couldn't get access, so that's why this objective is lingering. There we go. It can reach everyone in that area. We just need a kiosk here for this little group. I think I might just put an alcohol kiosk nearby all of the districts. And a lot of our paths are still uncompleted, so our sports fields need to be linked up as well. Bit of a spaghetti going on. Just waiting for everyone to test out the new sports fields. And we should have completed that as well. The last demand we need to provide is for culture. Let's build a cinema. Later you can build a radio or a TV station. Okay. Get rid of this little road. The house of culture had to go. Wasted a lot of money on blowing things up that I've already built. We may need two cinemas as well. So I may place one here. And then when we need to, place one further up the road. Get rid of these little footpaths. Oh, you buggers. Yeah, you've got to be careful with the bulldozer. They just take everything out. <laughs> they don't care. You give the order, they'll smash it. Again, we need to rebuild the road. And we'll put a second cinema in. There is a wireframe mode, which I have active right now. And it's snap, you can snap to it too. So if you really want to be symmetrical, you can get that to happen. I'm not building cheap roads game. I'm building expensive roads. So my people walk faster. Every Soviet Republic needs monuments, but we already have them. Religious sympathy is something that some of our people want, but we don't care about. <laughs> oh dear. Let's make sure there are enough people in our Republic. We need to invite people. Okay. Well, it's going to cost us even more rubles. We have to fill all the buildings. Oh, geez. So these large flats have 150 people. Not 180. Inviting everyone from the Soviet bloc, hey? Come have a party. We've built a new city. Totally got jobs for everyone. I promise the unemployment is not 65%. <laughs> Population of 4,000 nearly. I think we're going to get there. We need to get some industry running ASAP. Look at the money going down still. Make sure your workers are buying goods. How do we do that? Buy, buy, buy? No. <laughs> going a bit crazy here. Sorry, guys. 
This is how to bankrupt your republic in, in one easy step. <laughs> Give them lots of electronics. Everyone can have radios, we don't have anything to listen to. But you're welcome to try. Fill up the coffers with alcohol. Fill up the kiosks. Is that everything? It's just making me spend money. Thank you, comrade. I hope you learned how to build your city well. Thanks for the tips. Let's go emergencies. Petrov. <laughs> he wants a hospital. And we've... Not every citizen has access to the hospital, but an efficient and bus and train service can bring them there. You also need educated workers, which we already have. We have 60 doctors already. <laughs> oh, shit. And we could buy an MI6, an MI8, an MI4 for our ambulance. Heck, why not? Let's just buy a helicopter for our ambulance. We'll buy, obviously, a few Ghostbusters cars as well. Well done. Our hospital is operational. Thanks for the tips, buddy. Now the fire chief. <laughs> fire chief's come over. He's like, thanks for, the, thanks for the fire station, guys. You're a very proactive leader there, sir. <laughs> right, he wants a fire truck, though. We did forget that. So we'll give him... We'll give him one of each. That's a pretty good one. We'll buy two of those. Okay. And the fire station is linked to all the buildings by road. So that's, we've got green lights on the board. We just don't have any firefighters. Maybe they will make their way over there shortly. We only need five. And we have a fire station that can hold 40. We have 45 doctors on staff. We have 75 people working in the hospital. Our unemployment's come up to 73%. So hopefully someone wants a firefighter's job. This may not be how to play, but this is how you probably will play. The building is now on fire. That's good timing, but it's scripted. One of our blocks are on fire. The rubles are still purging from the account. We've still got two million US dollars though. So I'm not sure how we spend those. I'm sure we'll find out through this extensive tutorial. I thought that was our fire, but that's just the obelisks that we placed everywhere. Like I said, phallic symbols of power are the way to go. Clipping through the building, the fire fighters have arrived in the small van. Getting huge warnings about unemployment. 71%. The large trucks arrived. And they're putting out the fire. Our hospital can reach the people, but our people can't reach the hospital. So let's put in our first bus station. We'll set up a bus stop uh, just outside the hospital between the shopping center. And those that can't reach those services from their homes will be able to use the bus service. If I can get the road to link, but it doesn't like merging with footpaths. Where are you at node? Does not like the footpath at all. I have to delete it. Move it. Oh, I took the road as well. That bulldozer is a deadly machine. <laughs> it's like, I want you to knock down the path, brother. Okay, <laughs> it just takes out the whole block. <laughs> oh, well, at least the, the road crews now have... Oh, we're still importing labor, so we're, our unemployment is still going to stay at 70%. think that will work. We won't have too much traffic coming up the service road to the cinema. Footpath has to go jaggedy. I will tidy all this up in my downtime. 
But now we just want it to be functional. I won't use the bulldozer though. Can we make this one way? So we don't have buses going everywhere? Nope. It has to go from the node. Yeah. Okay. Alright, one way. Two lanes. Alright, we're halfway through our budget. Let's quickly upgrade all of the footpaths so they're the best type. Hold down the shift button, drag and click. Not that way. Mostly okay. Alright, so all of our paths are upgraded, I think. Yep. Some don't even have paths. I don't want to overburden our brand new transport network when we do build the bus line. So let's build a small clinic. Where's the clinic? Inside this larger district so that everyone's not just pouring out to go to hospital. So let's try and find a space here for the clinic. And that should service everyone in this district. And if they need to, they can head to hospital. Good stuff. I have a road depot down for when we purchase our first buses. And I just need to put in a second stop. Somewhere. But the pathing looks good for our people. We've got no access out across the road, which is good. And we need one more sports field to fit in this gap. I had to delete the one. It was too close. You couldn't get any path through it at all. So I need to find the smallest piece. That should do. And it'll have auto connections. Good. So our happiness is going to go up as a result of that. Everyone's getting the clothes they need. Our rubles are now just trickling out instead of flooding out like they were before. Top up the kiosk. And I think we're okay. Our Palace of Communism has a rating of 3.1. Let's see if we can make it better by planting some trees. We have a couple of car parks. We're going to put down a bus stop to link the park gate. And that is the capital of our republic. I'm going to call it Krakosia. And that's a bit of a cheeky nod to the movie The Terminal. I always wondered what that country was like. And now we're going to build one. I'm Commander Tyrael. This is Workers and Resources, Soviet Republic. This is the glorious Republic of Karakosia. If you would like to see it continue to flourish, make sure to come back next time and we will build it together. Until then, Commander Tyrael out.